about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Listen to me. Sooner or later in your life, if it's not already happening to you right now, you're going to get to a point in your life where you will need to communicate forgiveness cheated in business backstabbed politically betrayed in ministry taken advantage of this is the world of men Jesus is teaching us if I ask everybody to come, in, to come and pick this mic and tell us the story behind your resentment for men some of you concluded that all men are wicked and evil and devilish. I don't need any man. No. Take it easy. God still uses men. Some of you is preachers you hate. When you see any man on stage, you curse him before you even know him. That's how they stole our money that year. Exactly. And the man can preach just like him. That's, that's exactly <laughs> <laughs> listen to me my brothers and my sisters hear me I bring you the word of the Lord it is important for you maintain don't just receive forgiveness Jesus was teaching here he said I am willing the father is willing to communicate forgiveness but you must have this revelation forever for as long as you are alive can I even tell you something? Your forgiveness will need to graduate into forbearance. Let me tell you the difference between forgiveness and forbearance. Forgiveness happens because of the limitations of men. Mistakes, limitations, ignorance, foolishness. Forbearance means that that weakness still remains in the person and you will have to live with it forever. That means it will be repeated again. This should be taught. Have you prayed for your son and you called him and said, why are you living like this? Why are you a bad boy? And he says, daddy, I will never do it again. By evening, police is calling you. E evening, not the next day. Don't feel bad, please. If you have someone, that's why they are here. We'll pray for them. Six o'clock, are you the owner of this child? Yes, sir. Please come to the... We are tired. If this boy, if he comes here again, you tell him and you are standing there say, I thought this guy just begged. At that point, you don't need forgiveness again. You need forbearance. He's a prodigal son, but he's still my son. Something happened, and I'm only going to say it because Archbishop Benson, either Hosa is gone, and then, you know, years ago, this was from Duncan Williams himself. He, he said how that, I think it was Oral Robert, I don't know, who came to Ghana and had a meeting and while they were reporting the meeting, they made mistakes and they credited some of the churches that belong to Bishop Duncan Williams to Ora Roberts. And when he heard it, he said, no, he just tried to correct them sharply. And then when the report got to Ora Roberts, he said, no, 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 why should this guy be doing this? And then he called on Archbishop Benz in Isahosa and said, why is your son behaving like this? I mean, you taught this guy well, he should behave well. And then Bishop... Benzini Dahosa called him as a son to rebuke him. 
and he said i would not come duncan williams in his own words leave me alone i will not come you are not god and he said all right from today you're on your own it didn't take two years everything was pursuing him from government to demons to principalities nature men everything i mean it he got to a point where he prayed he fasted no matter what you do if it's in disobedience you will have to go back to the protocol of god's ordinance you're not going to quietly manipulate god in the secret place when you are living largely no it doesn't work that way the prodigal son can ask for forgiveness while he's with the swine but for restoration he must still meet his father listen carefully and then he now called and it was difficult to now reach Benson Hidamosa. His life had been so shattered. He was a shadow of himself. And then he heard that Archbishop Benson Hidamosa was in London. And he booked a flight quickly. When he got there, he lay down flat on the ground and held his legs. And said, no matter what happens, you are still my father. And he said, look what has happened to my life. And he said, Bishop Benson Hidamosa just looked at him. And after a while, took him a deep breath. And here's all he said. Satan, this is the business between me and my son. The legal access you have, it is me he has offended. Leave two of us together. You can now go. You will need to obtain forgiveness many times in your lifetime you will need to give forgiveness listen to me there are people here who it's as though you would rather die than to forgive your wife or your husband or your children no this child wasted my school fees i, I wasted money paying school fees i didn't eat well I paid school fees and look the kind of result he brought. Let me tell you this. One of the most powerful words for me in the Bible is the word again. Again is a powerful word. It's the clearest description of hope. And Adam knew his wife again. The prodigal son again. The Lord is speaking to you here. You're under the sound of my voice. Piling up a list of people. For as long as you pin people down, you too, you will remain down. You cannot rise when you are pinning others down. Apostle, you don't know what they did to me. Apostle, forgive us our trespasses. There are pastors today who hate others, talk about others, tear down others. I don't care whether you are right or wrong. It says, forgive us as we forgive. When it has to do with offense, he's saying everybody's in the same basket. It's often said that if you point one finger at someone, is it two or three now? I don't know how many. A number of your fingers are pointing back at you. That is so true. In fact, ethically, some of you here are HR specialists, you are consultants. And I think there is a conflict management principle that HR people teach. That if you want to report someone who is a staff in a company, before you say one thing that is wrong against that person, you must say three things you like. That means if you are coming to meet the HR or the boss, before you say this person, you are bad or he's a thief. If you cannot tell your boss three things, about the person that is positive he will send you away he will say complain the day you show me three other things that are good about the person and they found out that it has improved the working relationship of many people within the company because by the time you're researching and finding the things that are good you will just see how minute that issue is and you say i forgive you Use it for your company from tomorrow. Call them and tell them I learned something. All of you come together. No more complain until it's ratio three to one. 
where sin abound much more grace abound so use that as a scriptural backing maintain an allowance for the humanity of men as you live in this world take away the godlike expectation that you have over men leave home i remember one time someone called me i i i got up i think around maybe two or three i don't do much of sleep in the night and i saw a text that was full of all kinds of things you claim you're a man of God. I've been calling you. I was so tired. I was sleeping. You know? This person insulted me and said, This I'm calling you to pray. If my loved one dies, just know you killed my loved one. What is this now? I only slept. They say you pray in the night. Yes, it's true. But that day I was tired. Should I lie? I only I slept. Listen, it's good to expect so much. But you must have realistic, know the difference between realistic and unrealistic expectations. Are we together? There are people today who get angry at politicians. I gave you 50 names to give all of them a job. You only gave five. What kind of person are you? Ah, he says, I've tried my best. You are not the only one. Didn't I vote for you? Your vote is only one. Be patient. <laughs> What of business people? You must have a large heart. Please listen to me. The humanity of men is something you must factor in your heart. Otherwise, you will have heart attack every day of your life. Every day. Every day. I'm wrapping up. Let me give you a story. When I started ministry, I was so passionate about being in the good books of everybody i'm a peace loving person i don't like trouble as you see me like this if it takes me sleeping on the ground here for peace to reign i will do it peacefully and quietly people took advantage of me people will sleep they will wake up stretch themselves and now try to call me if i'm not available they'll say you said god god told you god sent you to us i will feel so blackmailed i was almost i was drained let me tell you how God delivered me. I entered a Catholic church and I looked at the crucifix. You know, the, the cross that they put there. And the Holy Spirit said, whose face is there? This is true. For the first time I realized I was not the one who died for the sins of people. <laughs> Honestly. Honestly. It just occurred to me that you can never truly satisfy everybody's needs the goal is to be sincere and to do your best with the grace that god has given you because the time it takes to appease another is the same time that allows to offend another can you come to my house okay i'm coming ah you went to this house what of my own okay don't worry i will see what i can do i would i would receive over five invitations for the same date and they will forget to contact me and then remind me sometimes the morning of that meeting i hope you are still coming our posters are out and i'm saying god what am i doing now and for some of them the journey there's no airport there and then we're just starting the resources to have the luxury to travel is not even there Can you forgive i went to preach somewhere when i started out in ministry it was raining i went through the rain do you know when i got to the church they didn't keep a seat for me i was a preacher <laughs> yes sir they were acting drama laughing around jumping and playing i fasted i prepared a very serious sermon i came to pray for people with all my heart and here's what these people are doing i stood at the door they put umbrella and then eventually they had to push some people please move move that's how they got a seat for me and then they acted drama for over one hour plus they were laughing i said what is going on here why did i accept this invitation i'm not saying drama is wrong and then when i got up 
I had not even raised one song of worship. They just brought a paper and passed a story. Time has gone and you know, security. Uh, can I just, maybe 15 minutes or so. I said, oh no, no, come on. This is In the end of it, I still was happy. I said, Lord, I'm not going to allow offense or bitterness destroy and corrupt. Someone came here hungry to receive. Let me tell you this. One of the secrets of the anointing is not prayer and fasting. It's love and compassion. It's not enough to just want power. You must have a high level of forbearance. Some of the nastiest people in your life may be some of the most sincere people too. They are just people who do not know how to manage the emotions around their lives. You must obtain grace to forgive. There are some of you who need to forgive. Maybe your house helps. You are already planning that this week you, you are going to jail them. Take it easy. Take it easy. Give them a chance again. When I learned this in ministry, it gave me peace. There is absolutely nothing that surprises me today in ministry. Now, my heart is prepared for anything. Anything. As I'm here, if I hear that the security people in my house have run away with my car, I'll say, okay, no problem. That's all right. God, thank you. It's your own police. I hand over the case to you. If you find the car, good. If you don't find it, that's all right. Please, I need peace in my life. Make up your mind that you are going to have peace. Let me tell you this. Do you know the highest index for measuring wealth is peace? Not progress. Peace. There are many people today the names of people is what makes your blood pressure to be running up and down you want to sleep you just remember oh this senator oh this person oh this business person can you imagine how this person betrayed me five billion gone like that it's gone but be patient god can restore but it's when you sleep and wake up he restores if you die they bury you make up your mind Great peace have them that trust or love the Lord. He said, in nothing. Listen, make up your mind that you will have peace in your life. Nobody will steal. Your peace is an asset. Don't trade it. Are we together? Peace. I was told of someone who died from April Fool. True story. This thing they do during April. You no, know, you just come and lie. And, and they said something serious and he died of a heart attack. The person who was joking did not know what to do now. Forgive as you are forgiven. Our time is up. Let me touch on one aspect. Just give me five minutes and we're done next it says lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil now this is a very powerful scripture lead us not into temptation that means men don't just get tempted they are led this is a very powerful information temptation does not just come to meet you there is someone or something that leads you and he said lord your leadership does not lead men into temptation lead us please keep the scripture there lead us not into temptation it's the day that armed robbers will come somewhere a voice will say go and rest there you are being led you just go and sit down there and get into trouble there are many people who were innocent but because they could not discern they went and fell into trouble you must pray for guidance not everything that looks good is good not every door that is opened is anointed in fact almost all troubles first appear as good lead us not into temptation is a very powerful prayer the guidance the leadership of the holy spirit isaiah chapter 30 you read from verse 21 and 23 please let's hurry up isaiah 30 21 and 23 the bible says isaiah 20 it says isaiah 20 isaiah 30 sorry 
30 from verse 21 to 23 please write it down for reference isaiah 30 it says and thy ear shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left 22 the bible says oh dear let's just keep 21 go back to 21 i think i should just leave it there your ears shall hear a word from behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when you turn to the right and when you turn to the left in this world that we live in you need divine direction to be guided to go away from the place of temptation there are people who had no business getting into certain kinds of troubles but they were led there there are some of our children who had no business joining certain groups but they were led there they just got into the midst of people and they said okay we are this fraternity we are these occult groups there are many people today the destruction in your life started when you were led to join certain clubs certain groups the prayer to lead us not into temptation is a very powerful prayer lord anything that has trouble in the end save me from getting there lead us that means your will plays a role temptation does not come until there is something in you that resonates with that temptation are we together satan does not tempt you around anything in your life that does not truly desire if you are broke the temptation will be packaged around finances chances are that you will respond to it because you are hungry remember jesus the temptation the first temptation had to do with hunger you are hungry why don't you turn this stone to bread listen don't just pray for your needs alone pray that god will give you the stamina not to fall into temptations that come around your need you may be needing a house in abuja desperately your family members are stranded and satan comes why don't you compromise and you will get one million overnight for a house it's easy to resist temptation when you don't have a need satan is not foolish he will wait till you have a need and the need presses you to the neck then he comes with an offer it's difficult to say no when you have a need lead us not into temptation and then he says deliver us from evil now this one evil you don't have to go there evil is a is a living spirit it moves around looking for men you know a man of god a man of god gave a story very very touching story about a man who tried to board a flight and he was rushing there and for whatever reason you know it was close before he got there the flight lifted a few minutes later he would hear from the news maybe an hour later or so that the flight crashed he was saying wow then he went to join a train and the train crashed that one and he died in the train you see that one death was looking for him death was intentional if you if you miss the air i'm still waiting for you on land let me tell you this two scriptures please very quickly two scriptures first john 5 19 first john 5 19 never forget this scripture first john 5 19 the bible says we know that we are of god and the whole world not abuja not nigeria not africa the whole world lieth in wickedness every one of us here is a potential victim of wickedness if unassisted by god everyone you don't have to offend anyone just be alive even the dead body of moses when moses died was he free satan still came to carry remember he wanted the dead body when jesus died was he free they still put people to cover the body what do you do with a dead body they covered it in a tomb and they still put people to protect the body last scripture for tonight second peter chapter 2 and verse 9 second peter chapter 2 and verse 9 i say amen to this before we even read it amen. 
the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. The key word or the key phrase is the Lord knoweth how to. <laughs> God knows. A woman knows how to make jollof rice. God knows how to deliver you and knows how to push the enemy to the place where he knows that there is a God in heaven. God is a deliverer. Deliver us from evil. It's a prayer you need to pray sincerely. Deliver my family from evil. Deliver my ministry from evil. Deliver my business from evil. This is Jesus teaching us how to pray. That this must be the construction of our approach to prayer. These are the details that must be captured in prayer that prevails. Please listen to me believers who are wrapping up. The Lord is teaching us this because he wants our prayer life to be rich. That when next you go to pray, whether you are praying in the spirit, whether you are praying in understanding, you must approach it with this body of thought, with this mindset. I am coming to my father. I have the faith to approach him. I approach him with the spirit of reverence. My priority is that the kingdom come. I know he's a giver. He gives me daily by supplying favor and using the ministry of men. So every time you are praying, God open a door. You are not just playing a blind prayer. Father, doors must be open. Doors, no, you know how the doors are open. You are no longer in confusion. If I ask you now, how do doors open? You shouldn't be confused. It is through men. So when I'm saying, Lord, open doors, invariably I'm saying, send destiny helpers. I'm no longer praying a careless prayer. I'm not shadow boxing. I know send me divine connectors send me men of influence send me gifted people send me burden bearers if God wants to lift me how does he lift me he uses men so give me the wisdom to maintain strategic relationships oh God now your prayer life is fruitful just pray randomly God, don't leave me like this. Change my story. Wipe my tears. It may be a sincere prayer. But I'm telling you, you will not be able to maximize that prayer because intelligence is not captured in that prayer. Now if God comes and speaks prophetically in the name of Jesus, by this week, you are returning with a testimony. While you are saying amen, you are not just saying a blind amen. There are revelations that support your receiving. What are the revelations? Favor is upon my life. That favor will make men to come to me. That favor will orchestrate events. That is the basis of your saying amen. The devil will not plant doubt now. You know why you are saying amen. Now you give the Holy Spirit room to be able to walk that word. Are we together? Every closed door be open now. You are saying amen. You know why you are saying amen? Because there is the power of the Holy Spirit that can swing open doors in the Spirit. Are you ready to pray? You are not going to stand. Please sit. We will pray for just one minute and then I do the altar call and we are done. Please, whilst you are praying, you are seated. I would like you to lift your voice in one minute and say, Father, change my perspective as far as the ministry of prayer is concerned i am a king and i am a priest i want to begin to pray the kind of prayer that produces results please lift your voice and pray you came to church outside are you praying The mystery of prevailing prayer. Lord, I desire my prayer life to be full, to be rich. I approach you as Abba, my source. No fear, sustainer, defender. I come to you by faith, full of reverence. 
I come to you asking that your kingdom find expression in my life let your will be done in my home my ministry my office you are a giver send me my daily bread I have shortchanged myself I have lived for 30 years 40 years 60 years 70 years 80 years I didn't know you give daily I thought you only give once per year now I release my faith oh giver of all good things what do you have in store for me today what do you have in store for my family today give me my daily bread forgive me my trespasses I obtain grace to forgive those who trespass against me I live with the awareness that this is the world of men lead me not into temptation oh God deliver me from evil we are wrapping up then the prayer he taught ends with this for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever keep praying amen for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever request that we all rise let's minimize movement everywhere all the overflows outside following online please stand please stand please stand I want to make the altar call it never tires me to give people an opportunity to run to Jesus the church is like a hospital the hospital has several departments and several compartments there is a place called intensive care unit where you treat patients whose situation is a matter of life and death please look up no matter what it is that you have and you know if Jesus is not Lord of your life you are truly not saved it says what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and to lose his soul week in week out we have thousands of people streaming in coming here following online from all across the continent it's our assignment to give people room to truly come and make bold declarations for jesus you are here under the sound of my voice in this main auditorium and then outside you're saying apostle i love jesus but I'm yet to make a genuine decision. For some of you, you probably have made the decision and your life just went haywire. And you're saying, I need Jesus right now. We have just two minutes for you. Wherever you are, whilst we clap and encourage you, please very quickly run from your seat and I want you to come and stand here. Run and come and stand here. Run like there's fire on the mountain. Come like you truly mean business with Jesus. Don't be ashamed. Don't say we came in group. Uh -uh. This is a personal affair. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Celebrate them as they come. Scripture says, He must be born again. He must be born again. Keep coming. Win that war tonight. 
Jesus is giving you an opportunity to make it right is this all I still believe there are a few more people all those in the overflows just move to your projector stand all the overflows right down to the basement and then outside move to your projector stand and you who are following from your home your office your device wherever I want you to connect I'm about to lead them in this prayer make sure you participate in the prayer God bless you thank you thank you for being bold thank you for not being ashamed of Jesus hallelujah if you're joining them please quickly come quickly come ladies and gentlemen thank you thank you for the boldness it takes a lot of boldness to come and stand before Jesus and before his people but can I tell you this this is the noblest and the wisest decision any man can make in his lifetime the decision to hand over everything to Jesus in exchange for his life the Bible says as many as will come to him he will in no wise cast away it doesn't matter how you have been how you have lived what went right or wrong he's able to give you a new beginning lift your right hand and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem Jesus is here say after me very loud say it very clear say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart and I believe that you are the son of God tonight I make you my Lord my Savior my King I obtain forgiveness of sin I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign from tonight and forever I am a child of God amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for this once it's always an honor to present to you precious souls men and women who Jesus died for Lord I pray according to the authority of scripture I declare their sins forgiven I declare that you give them a new beginning even by your spirit the power of Satan the power of sin the grave is broken over your life from today I declare that you are commended to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit the Lord himself will build you to be mighty in the spirit you go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen God bless you now very quickly thank you I like you to please follow this gentleman waving the placard up and they'll just have a word with you and you'll be back to your seat please celebrate them very quickly celebrate them very quickly hallelujah thank you for your patience just give me two minutes we stretched a bit now um, I really apologize I, I honor everyone this is a house of honor we make it a culture to not trivialize people I know that there are so many people noble people who come from all over this city and around this nation and as much as God grants us grace we do well to recognize um, a few people and honor them but please let me apologize in advance if for any reason you're not recognized and you're not accorded honor openly and publicly it doesn't mean that we will hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you